Good morning, welcome to the CBS AM debrief. I'm David Kern. It's Tuesday the 26th of October. Uh, just coming up to 9 o'clock. Um, overnight market action. Uh, once again, it was the banks that were causing the concerns in the US. Um, however, the uh, weaker dollar there did boost the resources stocks and hopes of a, a further stimulus by the central bank um, help the, uh, the bulls uh, ultimately prevail and uh, push the market higher. In fact, uh, the Dow was up about 31 points, so uh, uh, not, not a huge move there, but um, enough to uh, uh, give, uh, give the bulls a point. Um, have a look at the uh, indices here, or in the rest of the North America and then Europe and here, uh, the S&P 500 down uh, just 0.1. Uh, NASDAQ up one, so about the uh, indices there are not, uh, not doing a great deal. Um, similar sort of picture in Europe with the FTSE up 22.5, the CAC up 4.5 and the DAX up 35.5. Uh, locally, of course, yesterday we had the announcement that the uh, Singapore Stock Exchange was uh, uh, keen to uh, was offering up a merger or takeover of the ASX and that helped push our market sharply higher and uh, we'll just uh, get back to that and that uh, saw it close up 61.80 points. The Hang Seng was up uh, 110 and the Nikkei down 25. Uh, that futures figure for today would see a little bit of the uh, uh, ups and down day here or, um, or or not uh, not too much upside. Hang Seng is looking like we'll be up 222 and the Nikkei up 10. Just while we're looking at the uh, the overall market here, we'll just have a look at the VectorVest system and we can see that we have uh, a second day with three greens which is uh, indicative of a fairly uh, uh, bullish outlook by the system and uh, the colour guard, which is the speed on whatever thing here, is suggesting that uh, it's pretty safe time to be looking at uh, for undervalued stocks that are rising in price. Uh, the colour guard here is for the price action, the relative timing and the buy-sell ratio. And we can actually get a little bit more of a feel for that graphically. Uh, here, on September the 7th was the last time we had a market call where they actually emphatically say go long or get out the market. Um, the key here I guess is are we going to take out this 4700 level? Certainly been uh, trying pretty hard. I guess if it does break out strongly to the upside it's probably not a bad time to be uh, looking at picking up some things here that look attractive. Um, we'll just have a look at that market call and there it is. So the last time we had a market down was uh, the 24th of August and then we've had one on the 9th of September and nothing since then. So certainly fairly uh, bullish indicator there. Move on now. Uh, to our commodities with uh, West Texas at 82.40, uh, just up a little bit there. Uh, coffee at 250, corn at 568 and three quarters. Uh, cotton was up strongly again. Uh, that looks like a limit update at 124.71. Wheat at 674. Sugar 28.50. Soy at 12.30. Reasonably strong showing there. Uh, oats at 365, up 2.24, and rough rice up 3.03%. And soy at, uh, we look at soy, copper at 385.50, that's up uh, 5.8 cents. And gold putting a strong showing at 13.40 and 50 cents. Um, talk about uh, retracement there is uh, perhaps a, a little bit premature, but. Um, I guess, we'll, uh, I guess we'll find out. Uh, silver was 23.65 and a half. And then uh, the currency pairs, the euro is buying 1.3966 US dollars, the pound 1.5737, the 
uh, the yen, or the dollar was buying 80.813 yen, the Aussie was buying 99.13, the US dollar is buying 1.0195 Canadian dollars and 0 0.9710 Swiss francs. Take a look at our economic calendar for today. Nothing too significant. Uh, there is a GDP number out of the UK for the third quarter. Uh, that's around 7.30 our time tonight. Uh, forecast is a 0.4 figure. Previous was 1.2. So if we say a significantly different uh, number to that forecast, um, there might be, uh, might be a bit of a reaction. Um, then, of course, more uh, importantly to uh, our region is uh, tomorrow morning uh, we've got our CPI data out. Now, uh, a big figure there would um, almost certainly uh, encourage the RBA to uh, uh, raise rates on uh, Melbourne Cup Day, first Tuesday of, uh, of the month, so uh, November next week, Today week in fact. Um, so that's probably one to watch to uh, give a bit of uh, guidance there as to what might happen next week. Uh, that's uh, about it apart from later on this evening when we've got durable goods orders which uh, um, forecast at 2%, previous was negative 1.5, so a good figure there would be further encouraging signs that the uh, US is slowly taking the corner. Um, so that's perhaps, uh, perhaps one to watch as well. That's about it for the next day or so. Let's, uh, let's take a quick look now at a few of the things that are going on in the Falcon Trader. And I'll just come back to the vector best for one moment because whilst we we're talking here, looking at these uh, market timing uh, indicators, we then look at, if we deem that the market is, uh, is looking uh, good to, uh, to get into, then we look at picking our stocks. And so the top pick for, for VectorVest is, uh, in terms of value, safety and timing, is Medusa Mining. We can actually expand that list out. Just waiting for that to load up. And there you can see a more uh, lengthy listing, and that can be up to the top 1,000 stocks of the 1500 stocks that it covers on the ASX and we can see why it's getting that top rating because in terms of the composite figure, value, safety and timing, uh, it gets a 1.57 which is, uh, is basically the best uh, stock of those that it covers. So uh, we'll, um, we'll just go back to the, the balcony here and, and look at what's actually happening with Medusa and see it's broken out of this uh, just below $5 level uh, literally a couple of weeks ago. It then got up to about 560 or so and then pulled back a little bit. I think that was partly on the back of the, uh, the pullback in, uh, in gold there. Um, so it seems to be moving up quite nicely here. The other thing that's worthy of, of note is that it is delisting on the AIM market in London, the alternate investment market. Um, and it's going to be listing on the main board, so the main London uh, exchange. And usually that requires some uh, index reweighting and uh, uh, so adds uh, some interest to the, uh, the stock into, a, into the market there. So you might see that this is an opportunity to um, to get in here on a very uh, very solid uh, gold stock. Um, so perhaps one there to consider. Take a look now at the ASX S&P 200, uh, back up at this 47 level, which I think we've uh, certainly talked about as being a fairly significant uh, level of resistance. Um, but a break of that should see a fairly good, strong rally. And in fact, uh, just looking here at our Fibonacci number from our ABC pool, that the 1.618 extension is actually at 40. 8.61, so it'll be interesting to see if it gets up near there and um, and decides to have a rest. 
uh, just revisit the uh, MinCore trade that I was talking about a couple of weeks ago. That uh, clearly didn't work out when it broke down below that inner upward trend line here. It does seem to be finding some support here, but um, yeah, probably not too keen to get back into onto that one at this point. Now, uh, continue to watch cotton after we had that successful trade with uh, with shorting it, but. Um, at some point here, it's going to be a short again, but uh, the way it's it's trading, um, you, you'd be uh, brave to um, to be shorting that right now. It seems. Uh, talking of warrants, we've of course got the natural gas warrant that we're long on, and it's actually continued to sail off here. But we've got to take out these two lows here before I think we start to get really concerned. Um, if it does, then um, yeah, we might be in the in spot of bottom there. But uh, a bit early to say. Anyway, I've got plenty of time value in that warrant. Uh, doesn't expire till January. Okay, just uh, having a look here at what else we might want to have a quick look at before I finish up. Okay. Just looking at our dollar. Let's see if there's anything that we can deduce from what's happening here, other than, to my eye, just uh, getting further consolidation around this uh, 1.618 Fibonacci extension level. And I guess uh, a break of that could be quite decisive and um, then we'll be back above parity. You know, perhaps it will hold on to it a little bit longer than um, the couple of hours or so that it did uh, uh, Friday a week ago. Okay, well I think that um, about wraps up the AMD brief. Uh, trying to keep them brief. Uh, so um, we'll leave it at that for now. Um, thanks as always for your attention. Have a good day and uh, happy trading. Bye for now.